affiliates it's me crystal if you're new here welcome to our channel this channel we talk about fashion family and fun and how we're building the fulfilled business into a billion dollar company so let's get into it so this week i want to talk about our first event we had we had our first dinner it was called take care normalizing luxury and self-care for black women and honestly, I did not have an expectation of how it should go since it was our first one. I was so nervous about people showing up and like the people who RSVP'd, are they actually gonna come or are they just say they're coming? Um, but it was great. So the dinner was supposed to be held, first of all, let me back up. I wanted to have a dinner in February, then went in March, and then finally got pushed out to April. And I was trying to get like a really big restaurant um and i was trying to just you know do it big one thing i've noticed in myself especially when it comes to business is that i want to skip steps i want to do the big elaborate thing first versus like taking my time to learn the ropes even when i develop my collections i've developed such large robust collections that i have no focal point sometimes and i'm learning that less is more so I did end up getting a really big restaurant. It was one of my friend's restaurants. It's called Kokomo NYC. Located in Brooklyn. If you guys don't know, go check it out. Such a great vibe. The food is amazing, immaculate, everything. Service is great. But I didn't want to tap into that network because I have a weird thing with asking people for help. So when I reached out, it was kind of last minute. And I was like, hey... Who's your marketing person? I want to reach out. I would love to have a dinner. I sent him a proposal deck. And after I sent the deck over and his PR agency reached back out to me, I sent him a voice note just saying, hey, Kev, I want to let you know that I did send over a deck. I didn't want to spring it on you. I wanted to do it the professional route. But if you can, I would love for you guys to sponsor our dinner. And he said, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let, let's talk about it. Let me drink my tea real quick, though. Um, so the dinner, okay, first of all, going back to me not asking for help. So I thought I had everything under control in terms of setting up and which I did for the most part, but I would love to have had a team of people who were just designated to do everything and I could just host. So I got there, I got to the venue like around 4.45. I had to set up this rack that I had just gotten off of Amazon and it was a little tricky. I ain't gonna lie. I was like, why is this rack not coming together? Anyway, I had to steam all the clothes. And then I had to cut out these little signs that said love it or need it. <laughs> um, but what I realized was I thought I had everything in under control because I'm so used to doing things at a smaller scale or in my home that I didn't think about all the other logistics, right? So I had two models come to model the clothing. We had a little fashion show, which was really, really cute. <laughs> to one do fittings on them and two i had to also steam out their clothes make sure they felt comfortable have their shoes on give them this run of a show of how we're gonna you know work this program and i just wasn't prepared for that it looked fine it looked smooth but i would have felt better if i could have just delegated all these tasks to someone and then been able to do my glam the way i wanted to like have all of my accessories on i didn't have all of my things on because i was so like last minute i was steaming my own outfit at 6 45 and it started at 6. so there's that but what i would say is that you couldn't tell and i felt so happy you know when you know god is in something is when you have this just like unexplainable amount of peace and with this event i had no anxiety about it i felt at peace after i like the initial talk of the event and thinking it's gonna happen in march i let go of all my expectations for what the event should be and i said if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't no one knows about it yet and it is what it is and after that everything started happening and one thing i realized about letting go it doesn't mean that you let go you put it down a hundred percent where you don't do any work around it or towards it you just put the work in and you let go of the outcome. So that's what I'm doing. I'm putting the work in and letting go of the outcome. Um, and I talk with my hands a lot and I'm trying to figure out like how not to do that. But here we are. Anywho, um, so that was that part of the event that I wish I would have delegated. 
But then we got to cocktail hour, and I was a little nervous in cocktail hour because they gave us two separate rooms. Shout out to Kokomo because they really hooked us up. So cocktail hour was upstairs, and we had like light bites, some appetizers. We had free flowing drinks. We had a sponsor called Biop Gin. It's an African owned gin company. So good. Angela was our rep. She stayed for the entire night. She was so cool. I actually sat next to her in the dinner. So cool. Everything was great. Um, but everyone was sitting down. I was like, this is not a fulfilled vibe. The vibe, I, my vibe is I want to party. I want to have fun. I want to dance. But I realized that people didn't know each other. And people were still chit chatting. Don't get me wrong. But it was such an open space. And I only had a guest list of 28 people that it felt to me as if like everyone was kind of sitting on the outskirts versus coming to the middle, which is fine. I'm a brain about taking up space. So we're going to get the take up space part soon enough. Anyway, so I made my rounds. I like took pictures, of, took pictures with everyone. My photographers, Danny and Chad, they were so good. They're from Noir Photography. So good. So, like, accommodating. They knew what, they, what I wanted to accomplish. Everything was great. Um, I took pictures with everyone, and I got my own little photos in. I'm not, like, a center of attention girly, but last night, I was like, let's have the attention. And I didn't hate it. Everyone came and showed out and I really, really, really love the feedback that I got that I curated a room of joy and happiness. There was no mean girls and we all know who some of the mean girls are. I'm not, I'm not like that. I was a kid. I was the youngest cousin out of the bunch, the youngest sibling for a long time. I was a kid that got bullied. I am not mean girl in any way. I don't like mean girl energy. I don't like shady energy. I don't like funny style energy. And if I feel it, I cut it off at this point in my life. Before I went to it, now I cut it off. I don't care. And I said to myself, whoever was supposed to be there was there. I had two of my best friends couldn't make it. So them, I missed. I'm like, oh my God, I miss you guys. But there will be another event soon. I'm trying to figure out how I want to do that. Um, but the night was perfect. No, the energy was just a one. Even in the cocktail hour, like people were sitting next to each other who didn't know each other from a hole in the wall, which was great. They were chit-chatting. No one was like, oh my God, when is dinner going to start? Because the cocktail hour was more like a cocktail hour and a half. But the drinks were flowing, the appetizers were flowing, and they were good. Like, first of all, if y'all know me, my stomach is always hurting, right? So what I didn't do was eat a lot because I didn't want to be on the toilet in my own bed. <laughs> and I wore this dress that I literally had to like eat clean for like two days prior to the event because I didn't want to be bloated because my stomach was out and like, no one wants a photo with their stomach all big. Like, I am not pregnant, I don't think. But I didn't want that to show. Anywho, so after that, we went downstairs to the room, and it was so hell. So I had a Seely. Um, her company is called And Flora. She did bouquets for every single person in the room because I wanted to give everybody their flowers. And I really put together this event because I wanted to just thank all the women who poured into the Kafil business over the years. Um, whether it was with a post, whether it's with showing up to my showroom events, giving me opportunities for collaborations, mentoring me, talking through my brand strategy, volunteering to model for me in different events. Like every single time I've had an event, people have rallied around me. Some just because I'm Jamaican. Shout out to us. Bop, bop, bop. Um, and some because they believe in the brand and believe in me and it was just a moment that I had to take because I haven't been able to give out product the way I want to give out product. I haven't been able to gift things yet and I wanted to make sure I thanked every single person who has helped me. There were like three people in the room who have helped me in the past, three people who weren't in the room that have helped me in the past that I would love to do like a one-on-one -on -one thing with, which I will. Um, but I'm a big, big person on just showing your gratitude for the people who help you because no one has to help you. Trust and believe no one has to help you. No one has to give you anything. But these women have chosen to give me everything, you know? So I'm so thankful. And 
no one felt like it, there was no energy of annoyance or like oh what's happening or there was no little chit chat of like talking down on the event which i thought was like amazing because you know how some people can get women whatever whoever men we always want to find the negative and i i didn't hear it i didn't feel that energy i just felt like it was all love one thing i will say though is that now is the time for me to really market the brand in terms of marketing the product and gifting some things all just so when i have these events people show up in Phil head to toe that would be the only thing that i would want to change for this first event but like i said it's my first event right so people have to get a feel for the brand and if you didn't feel the brand the energy of the brand last night i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know maybe you just don't have feelings but i just know that it was such an amazing event i felt so full and i feel like when i'm in the midst of doing things I don't take a moment to feel what I feel. And I feel like even now, I'm still kind of high from it that I haven't sat and down and like really reflected like this really happened. And I think it's my trauma response of knowing how to shut my feelings off. So I don't feel my feelings. But prior to the event, the day I had the call with the with Kokomo, with the gin company and the photographer, I literally cried and I said, God, I am living in the midst of something that I prayed for. And I am so happy and I feel like life is starting to opening up, open up, and I think it's opening up just because I am viewing things differently. I'm excited, I'm excited. <laughs> and I have this ease in my spirit that I didn't have before. I was so focused on trying to make things happen that I was losing myself, and now I'm in a space where I don't wanna focus on making it happen. I'm gonna put in the work to contribute to it happening, but I know that God is the only one that makes things happen. And I think that gives me a level of comfort. Granted, I had my moments where, like, just last week, I had a breakdown. And I said, I'm going to quit the business because I'm failing. And, yeah. So here I am this week, and I'm so excited and re-energized. And I think that's just the entrepreneurial journey of feeling like you're a failure and then seeing the success and then, like, oh, my God. And then thinking that success is going to be, like, it forever. And then you realize you're just going to keep on going up and down. So what I'm teaching myself is how to balance those emotions so I don't get so caught up in the negative things and realize that God always turns it around. And when he wants me to put something down, he tells me to put it down. I am so full, so full, so full, so full off of this event. And the fact that I've been talking about doing this event and it's actually happening, and it's not happening because of me. Yeah, I had the, the vision, God gave me the vision and the, like, the plan for it. But all the moving parts, like it was sponsored. The only thing I paid for was the table decor and to tip the staff. Um, it was fully sponsored. And I said I wanted to do a fully sponsored event, period. I got some amazing sponsors for my gift bag. I have Socorro Rose, which I love. I did a pop-up with her in 2021. Um, she makes beautiful, beautiful candles. She contributed to our gift bags. Black Girl Vitamins. Actually, I should take my vitamin now. Um, they contributed to our gift bags. And A Cure Beauty, she contributed. Pure, which is a sustainable women's intimate line. They contributed to our gift bags. And then I make Cathil journals because Cathil was started on a blog. And that's how I take care of myself. I named the event Take Care because Cathil is literally how I take care of Crystal. It is a dream from my younger self. Um, I've written Kafil in my notebook in high school so many times that like my high school friends know like Kafil is me. Um, but it is a way that I am taking up space because this brand is pushing me to the front. It's pushing me to hide, get out of my own shadow. Um, and the shadow that I've built this big illusion of this huge business and it really is just about me and my core it's about it's my personal style it is the elegance that i want black women to feel it is the luxury that i have always known i deserved even as a child shout out to my parents they've never made me feel or anyone in my family made me feel like luxury isn't for us i've never walked into a store and felt like i shouldn't be there because i've always experienced those things same thing with restaurants traveling and I wanted to bring that to the world and to black women specifically because I think, especially now, things are not catered to us. Things are catered to white women. And not that anything is wrong with that because my, my brand is made for black women but can be bought by all. 
I wanted to create a special space for us to be celebrated, to be seen, to know that we are luxurious, but we are still fun. We get down, you know, I, my favorite go-to dance move is to twerk and I'm going to twerk in my gown. Why can't I do that? Why can't I do both? You know, but I wanted to show that we don't have to play small in order to fit in. Like you have to work twice as hard. You got to make yourself smaller. I don't believe that. I believe you still have to work hard, but I also believe that certain things are our birthright like luxury whether it's luxury and having your time back whether it's luxury and communing with women who are like-minded luxury and wearing beautiful clothing luxurious fabrics excellent craftsmanship but also it's about building the community of love and support and that is the number one thing i feel like i've always needed in my life and now that i'm fully building it and standing on it it feels so good to do that um what else oh at dinner ask the question i want y'all to answer the question put it in the comments as an adult, reflecting now as an adult, what TV show, movie, or song would you say depicts your ideal version of love? And I do want to ask one question to everyone in here. Now that we are adults, I want us to think about well, how we would describe our ideal relationship based on a movie, a TV show, or a song. Now that we are now that we're adults, we are adults. Green lights are done, I just know. Now a movie or a song I already have mine. Let's hear it, girl. Yeah, let's hear it. I'm getting a little bit of Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my and that question has people thinking, they're like, wait a minute. But I will say, black women, we are always overachievers because I definitely asked for a movie or a show or a song. And everybody's had three answers. I had one. So mine was, the song will be The Truth by India Ire. And another song will be Soul Provider. It's a Michael Bolton song, but I want the Jamaican version because, you know, I'm a Jamaican queen. TV show, I would say my wife and kids because it's all about family. They were fun. They were funny. Like he made it seem like he didn't listen to her needs, but he really did. She's same thing with him. Um, and movie, I still don't have a movie. My favorite movie is um, Love Jones. I do think they were a little toxic though, but I just like the fact that it was showing love, young black love without the fluff. I feel like there's so many rom coms that are like so fluffy and like. Oh, everything's a happy ending and they done gone through some things child she came out of a relationship so did he they wasn't ready for each other they were trying to make it work she went to go see if you know her past situation was something that she should wish should be he was like yeah you ain't gonna play like that mm -mm. so i'm gonna be out here doing my own thing she came back he hit her up saw him with another girl she decided to go hang out with his friend girl like why would you do that why why would you do that nina nia no, her name was Nina. Why would you do that? And Darius Love Hall or oh, out here acting like he don't care about Nia, but he did. Anywho. And then him being upset, but still realizing like, I love this girl, even though they had to take time away from each other for a year. I think that's so real. Like taking time away to grow as a person is like something that a lot of young couples need. Even I think about Insecure, I'm not gonna lie, I think Issa and Lawrence's relationship was at the end a very good relationship because it shows their character development, shows them the, like real life shit that we go through as young people. She cheated on him. Why she had to cheat? I don't know. But that happens all the time. And for a man to forgive, we forgive a lot more easier, but for a man to forgive, you know that was true love. And for her friends to rally around her and say like, it doesn't matter if he has a baby. It's not like he had a baby on you. You guys were in separate situations and she happened to get pregnant. If you love this man, be with this man. But I also have a thing about how black love in the media is always so toxic. There's nothing where it's just like, we've just been good. Um, one thing I will say is my mama, she gonna make sure I may pay her rent, okay? She said her, um, her song was Soon As I Get Home From Work, which I remember her playing this in the house as a kid so vividly. <laughs> She also said the Cosby show because they had a good family dynamic, which I really appreciated. Um, and TV, sh the, the, the movie, I don't, rem move, I don't remember what movie she said. Did she say Brown Sugar? Maybe. 
But I was like, you know what? Donna always gonna come through with the where's the coin? So, okay. Um, but it was such a lovely event, and I've had so many people reach out to me like, oh, where was my invite, sis? I will attend the next event. So I need your opinion. Like, should I do an event in the spring? Should I do a little picnic or a cookout? Or I don't know. I don't know. Let me 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 know. Um, I'm excited. I am so thankful for this opportunity to share the Kafil light with people and women. And I continue, I want to continue to do this in other cities. Um, LA, Houston, Atlanta, Chicago. I would love to just spread the Kafil joy. Um, and yeah, guys, I feel so good. Um, yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got. And it goes like this. Okay.